Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to say a few words about password security, or uh, what the experts like to call entropy. So let's get going. Okay, so in our modern society, passwords are a fact of life, and uh, your security depends on them in many cases. So you want to make sure that you've chosen a good password. Now, uh, there are many schemes that you can come up with for managing your passwords. I'm not going to go too much into that. I myself use a password manager. Um, but you can write them down on a piece of paper or keep them in your head, uh, however you want to do it. But in today's society, you have multiple uh, accounts and passwords, and it's not a good idea to use the same password on every account. So uh, and if you're trying to keep all of your passwords in your head, uh, it's not going to be an easy task. So you want some sort of system to manage them. But basically today, I just really want to talk about how to choose a good password and what makes a good password. So uh, let's uh, dive into that. Okay, so the major concept that we're going to discuss today about passwords is entropy. And it's a little bit of a fancy word. It just means how strong the password is uh, or how difficult it is to guess, okay? So we want to make sure that our passwords have strong entropy. And so what are the uh, factors that go into entropy? Okay, uh, there are lots of factors, but I'm going to talk about uh, the three that I feel are the most important uh, when we're dealing with entropy. First of this is the length, okay? We want to make sure that our password is long enough to be uh, strong or uncrackable to that extent or at least uh, difficult to crack. So the length of our password, <laughs> the length of our password is always uh, one of the major factors. We don't want to choose short passwords. And then the second one would be the character set. So when I talk about the character set, it means the, the pool of characters that we're choosing from when we create our password. So if we're only choosing numbers, uh, we don't have a very uh, long uh, or, or large character set. So uh, the, the numbers, the digits between uh, 0 and 9, uh, there's, not, there's only 10 of those. So if we're only choosing numbers, we're using a small character set. And a potential adversary can crack our password uh, with a small character set because he doesn't have to try very many combinations. So if we add numbers and letters, then we have a larger character set. Now, if we use uh, uppercase and lowercase, then we've increased the size of our character set. And then if we add in the special characters, then we've made it much larger. And that is why you get a lot of uh, password requirements that tell you that you have to use an upper and a lower case and at least one special character, because this adds to the strength of your password. Okay. The next one is going to be the predictability or uh, what we would call the unpredictability. So the unpredictability of your password is going to add to its entropy. So if your password is predictable, it could be long and it could be of uh, have a large character set, but if it's predictable, it's going to be crackable as well. So we don't want to choose predictable passwords, and that would be like the name of your children, or uh, your birthday, or your anniversary, or things like that, that if an adversary knows who you are, uh, they can uh, use those uh, as they're trying to crack your password. And then also uh, predictability and unpredictability predictability and unpredictability come into play when we use regular dictionary words because any uh, password cracker that's worth his salt is going to try a dictionary attack on your password. So if you're using English words 
uh, then uh, you've chosen a predictable password. So we don't want to choose predictable passwords. So let's do a few examples then. Here are some short examples of, we'll start off with bad passwords. Okay, there's our first one. Uh, not only is it short, uh, and not only does it use a small character set, just the lowercase letters, it's also predictable because it is a word in the dictionary. Now, here's another one. Uh, it's a little bit too short, and it's using a small character set, and it's predictable because it's following the sequence of numbers. You definitely don't want to use this kind of password when you're choosing a password. Uh, and here's another one that a lot of people use. Uh, this is probably the number one predictable password out there. Uh, just the word password. So uh, let's go a little further here. This is a long one, okay? It definitely has entropy in uh, the factor of length, but it's using a small character set. So uh, it could have more entropy if we use uh, letters, numbers, and special characters. And it's not really predictable either because it's not a sequence of numbers. But like I said, it's really its only strength is its length. Okay, now here we have another one. Uh, it's a little bit okay as far as length. Um, and it does have a large character set, but it still is predictable because many people use variations on the password uh, word for their uh using for their password. And this is uh, a predictable type of uh, password that is included in many uh, dictionary attacks uh, for hackers. Okay, and then uh, here's another one that's unpredictable. Uh, and uh, the length is not bad, but uh, small character set, uh, it suffers from the small character set and uh, it's a little bit short although it's not quite predictable. Ah, but is it predictable? It could be because if someone knew you and they knew that this was your birthday, then it is predictable. Okay, so we want to avoid uh, dates, uh, especially dates that are special to us, like birthdays and anniversaries. All right, and now let's go to some examples of better passwords. Uh, okay. Uh, before I, this is the one thing that I want to point out that is very interesting. If we look at the number, the uh, passwords out there, and the averages out there, most passwords start with a capital letter and end with a number. Now, yes, you've uh, used a long, uh, you know, fairly long password. In this case, they used a word, so. But even if it weren't a word, if it starts with a uppercase letter and ends with a number, then it is predictable to a certain extent. We want to avoid that. So a good password is going to start with a lowercase letter, a number, or a special character. Okay, so here's a fairly uh, good password that has entropy in the fact that it starts with a lowercase letter and it ends with an uppercase letter. It's also using a pretty good character set, and it's not predictable because it's not a word in the, di in the dictionary. Uh, it's a bit short, but it's a pretty decent password. Now, here's one uh, that uh, gets away from the norm. It's not starting with a, a uppercase letter, and it's quite long, and it's not very predictable, and it's using a pretty large character set. You know, it's using upper, lowercase, and uh, numbers and letters, and special characters. So this is a decent password. A little bit hard to remember, but uh, for your strong uh, accounts, you'll want to put this good password on there, and you'll want to have a system that you can refer back to it if you can't remember it in your head. Now, uh, here's an interesting example. Uh, we've got the good entropy, and uh, we've avoided the predictability to a certain extent, and it's nice and long, uh, but we've used a mnemonic to remember it. So uh, this is a technique that uh, will allow us to remember some of our longer passwords. Now, in a sense, it does have 
a little bit of predictability in it because it is a mnemonic phrase, but it, it is avoiding uh, just writing out the word. And if you haven't guessed yet, you know, we have a special character and then we have the phrase, how great is our God? So, uh, and we've changed some of the letters to numbers and uh, some of the letters to numbers here. And uh, we've added a special character at the end. So we've made uh, a password that has pretty good entropy that is uh, easy for us to remember. So this is a pretty good technique as well. Okay, so that concludes my short presentation on passwords. I hope that you all uh, strengthen your passwords, uh, make them hard to guess, make them hard to crack. You know, and you wonder, you know, why would I, you know, how could someone attack my password? Well, if they get a hold of a server, um, a LinkedIn, well, I don't want to name names, <laughs> but if someone were to get a hold of a server, be it a gaming server, be, be it an email server, be it uh, a, a social media site, and they've cracked into the server, then they can run dictionary attacks on all of those passwords. And your, pass, your password, if it's weak, someone may be able to access your social media account uh, or your email account or uh, your work account or anything of that nature based on the fact that they've uh, broken into the server and conducted dictionary attacks on those passwords. So your online passwords especially, you want them to be complicated and you don't want to use the same one over again because let's say it's a weak gaming server and they've managed to crack that gaming server and they've uh, figured out your email address and the password that you used for that particular account. Now that they know that, they can go after the stronger accounts that they may not be able to crack into like say Facebook or Twitter or uh, Gmail, and then they can just try to sign on using that email and that weak password that they managed to crack that you were using on the gaming server. And so once they've discovered uh, that password that you use uh, uh, over and over again, they will be able to gain access to some of the stronger accounts. So uh, please guys, don't use the same password for all of your uh, online accounts. Use a different password. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know the subject was a bit dry. I tried to keep it short and sweet, but uh, I encourage everyone to use strong passwords with good entropy. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. Uh, when you subscribe, there's a bell next to the subscribe button which will allow you to uh, be alerted whenever I post a new video. Once again, thanks for joining me.